Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God saved me just in time. Amen. Amen. He changed my body. He changed my mind. He changed everything. Amen. Let me tell you, boy. I know God is working. Yes. I know God is working. Yes. I can feel Him working. I can feel like His presence in this place. Amen. Amen. Who can say amen? Amen. Whew. I don't know what God is going to do today, but um, Jesus. I do know he's going to do something because he never falls off of his throne. Amen. <laughs> no. He never will. And he never will. Amen. amen. Who's ready? I'm ready. You sure? Yes, sir. Um, this week has been a, a good week. Interesting. And um, God has been speaking, and I'm excited to finish my series today. I already have, I already have next week's series. It's called The Babylonian Throne. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I haven't, <laughs> that doesn't work like that. <laughs> you never know, but... Um, Today, um, I finished what um, I've been preaching this week, and um, this week I've been speaking on the vines, the three vines, that was the title of my series, and let us pray. Lord, today I ask you in Jesus' name. Lord, today I ask you in Jesus' name. That my mind be open to your word. That my mind be open to your word. To bring me a fresh revelation. To bring me a fresh revelation. To my life. To my life. Today. Today. Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Lord, just speak today, Lord, and do as you please, and use me as you please. I um, I give you everything that I have, my heart, my mind, my spirit, Father God. I just place it in your hands, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The true vine is today's message. Woo! Amen? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Wednesday message was the dead vine. Hallelujah. I talked about John the Baptist, how he told the Sadducees and the Pharisees, you brew vipers. Amen. You guys remember, right? Yes. How um how they had their own beliefs and they made up their own truth and their own theory and how we can see that in the world that we live in today. Amen. And um I did have a main scripture in that in that um in that message that I want to bring to you because I think it's very relevant in our lives and it's very relevant in this series that, that I'm preaching today and that's in the book of Luke. You have that there? Okay. Amen. And it's Jesus speaking um, a parable and he says, he also spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in the vineyard and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Then he said to the keeper of his vine, Look, for three years have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. And it bears fruit and if it bears fruit, well. But if it doesn't, after, cut it down. God doesn't, cannot use rotten fruit. If you're rotten, 
I do not, I don't see how God could use you. And this parable, the main scripture that I'm speaking on, it's in the book of John chapter 15. But this is just a parable that Jesus said. And it's very relevant to, um, to my whole series because we need to be good. We need to be fruitful. And we can't just be hanging around doing nothing. Just, he says, three years and nothing. I keep coming back and nothing happens. And God is like, yo, you know, get real. Let's do something here. You know, we need, we need to get our minds focused on what God wants for our lives and go for it. We need to go for what God has. We cannot keep coming around and God every year saying, well, son, you know, this year is your year. And then in the beginning of the year, everyone does their New Year resolutions. I'm going to do this, this, and that. I don't do New Year's resolutions anymore because I don't want to say something that I'm not going to do. Amen? I just do it. I just need to do it. I can't keep saying I'm going to do it. Just do it. Amen? We can't keep, oh, this is my year, and, and, and then... You know, the third month comes around and I'm still doing the same thing. Or even worse. Because you know what the enemy does? He takes from your words. And then he goes like that and squishes it in your face. That's why maybe it's not even good to do a New Year's resolution. Because you get squashed. I just know what I need to do. And I need to do it. I can't have the Lord say, well, you know, you didn't do it this year. I want him to say, good, you did a great job, son. You outdid yourself. Amen. Who, who, who wants the Lord to say that to them? Amen. You outdid yourself. Like, you didn't fall short. I don't want to fall short. How many people here want to fall short? No, no. And then I spoke about this was a good this was a good message. Mm -hmm. I spoke about um like the people that we, we hang around with. That a lot of people that we hang around with are just wasting our time. And because of us hanging around with these people, they are dead fruit. And you are becoming dead fruit because you're hanging around with dead fruit. Because a lot, imagine having a good apple and throwing it in a, in a thing that has a bunch of rotten apples. What's going to happen? It's going to get rotten. We need to choose our friends wisely. Because dead, dead fruit it's going to kill good fruit. And I also talked about self-discipline. I'm just letting the Lord talk to me right now. Because this is something that we need to practice. We need to practice this. We need to self Discipline ourselves. I am not going to do that. Amen. Amen. I will not do that. Because you know what? He's looking at me. Oh, and now I went back two weeks. Because I'm just letting the Holy Ghost speak right now. I feel like closing my eyes. I'm scared because then I might say too many things to you. <laughs> Right? Then I spoke on Wednesday about the good fruit. Hallelujah. The good fruit. Israel. God's plan for Israel. For them to multiply. For them to bear good fruit. Amen? 
That's the same thing he wants for us. Same thing. Same thing. But if you, if you discipline yourself, if you start doing things the way God has been telling you to do for the past three years, not three years, it's been a lot more than three years, but since it says three years there, we're going to say three years. But I guarantee you it's been a lot more than three years. But, you know, this is what it is. And right now, this is what we're going to work with. Our now. What are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? Are you going to leave here today and, and do the same thing that you've been doing? Because God said on Wednesday that he's going to fertilize your ground. Oh, Ramachia. I feel some fertilizer already. Amen. I feel growth. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But that's up to you. Amen. Hallelujah. So God says, I'm going to give you a land that's flowing with milk and honey. So you could just take over. And then in that land, what was in that land? There was clusters. You remember? They couldn't even carry it by themselves. Two people had to carry them. Because God has clusters for us. He does. He does. But, you see, we can't let the little things kill what God has in our lives. Because it's like these little things always popping in our, in our minds. Like, like this, look. I don't want to preach no more. Because you know what? I can't do this anymore. I can't do this. I'm not feeling good today. So today, I'm going to take a break. That only happens to you? To me, right? That only happens to me. Like, I don't feel like doing nothing today. I'm not going to study. I'm going to throw a, a pity party, a tantrum, because I'm not feeling it today. I'm not going to get up here today because it's not working. Let me tell you something, church. If you set your mind on something, if you set your mind on something and you allow Christ to guide you, you will make it to where God wants you to be. I'm already, I want to finish this message already. Because when you're connected to the vine, let me tell you, that is your source. Because let me tell you, I was here. I could see myself here in a wheelchair with a big old thing like that and a, like 38 pins in my leg. Did I want to be up here? I wanted to be home throwing a pity party. Give me some medication. And then I went back there behind the drums and put my leg up in the air and, and played the drums. Because we, we needed some worship in here. I didn't want to do it. But you know what? I set my mind and I self-disciplined myself and I said, I'm not going to let the Lord down. Because it doesn't really have anything to do with you guys. It has to be with me and God. Because he hasn't let me down. So why would I ever let him down? Has he, has, he, has he ever let anyone down here? No. And how many times have we let him down? Boy, I'm preaching here now. I told Jean I was only going to preach for 15 minutes, but it does not look like that because I haven't even opened my iPad yet. So these people, God told them, I have something for you. God has something for you. 
a promised land where milk flows, some honey, everything that you need. Delicious. I got everything. The land is fertile. It's, it's great. Amen? And what happened? They go in the land and they get, they're like, that thing is hooked up. They bring back the fruit, but there's giants in the way. How many of us have had giants in our lives? Amen. Yep. Yeah. You see, this is what the Lord is telling me right now. You see, when I was in the world, I didn't really look at the giants in my life because I wasn't really living for God. So there wasn't really any giants. There is some stuff that happened and whatever, but I didn't see it that way. But now that we have come to the ways of the Lord, we see things differently. So now you see anything and it's like, whoa, it's like the enemy magnifies it to make you like, I can't do this. I can't do this anymore. At least for me in my, in, in, in my life and in my walk. Our faith needs to be increased. Our mind and our attitude cannot stay in the same level. I'm ready. I, I already, the message is going like this through my mind. And I want to just start preaching it. But if I start preaching, I'm going to like really get ahead of myself. And I don't want to do that. But God is speaking to me right now. And I want to be obedient. And um, we need to, to let go of that grasshopper mentality. We're not like that. That's what the people say. Oh, we look like grasshoppers. And you know why? Because they stayed like that. Like that. Like that. They had a 40, they, it took them 40 years to get there on a, what, how many? 11 one? 11 days. And it took them 40 years. And then when they went back to their grasshopper mentality, it took them another 40 years because God said, look, I'm going to have to take all these people away because that's crazy. How many years is it going to take us to get back to, to, come on, let's do this. It doesn't matter if there's six people here or 1,500 people. It doesn't really matter. I don't, I'm going to preach to whoever. Whoever is here, I will bring the word to it. And I am not going to back down. And we, can, we need to leave that grasshopper mentality and we need to go forward. Amen? We are not tiny. We are big in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me get into my message now. Like I said, today we're going to talk about the true vine. And this is who? Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to John chapter 15. Hallelujah. It says, I am the true vine. Who is the true vine again? Jesus. Come on, let me hear you. Jesus! And my father is the vine dresser. Who's the vine dresser? God the Father. God the Father. And what does the vine dresser do? What is the vine dresser? <laughs> it's a person that cultivates and prunes grapes. That's exactly what that is. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 2 says, 
Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he proves. That is, that it may bear more fruit. It says God, so who proves? God, right? Yes. Amen. The Greek word for prune means clean. Clean. Like, I'm going to clean that. God prunes us and takes away all the garbage that hinders us from growth. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He cleans us. Because if he doesn't clean us, we cannot walk around dirty. What do you think? If we walk around all dirty and nasty, all full of bad thoughts, and our, our attitude stinks, and everything is not right, I don't think God could use us this that way. I don't think we will produce any fruit that way. What do you think? I don't think so either. So he says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. That it may bear what? More fruit. More fruit. Hallelujah. And this is called discipline and challenges. <laughs> Did you understand that? Let me go backwards. Let me go back. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. This is called discipline and challenges. But the end result, you know what the end result is? Sweet fruit. Sweet fruit that our lives as Christians will bring forth honor to God. Hallelujah. I got a little picture in the internet. I don't know if Gene has it. He has it, right? Ooh, put it up. Look at that. That's a grape tree. And look at here, the head, the trunk, and everything, cordon, all that is Jesus. And we are the shoots and the canes, right? We are these branches. You see that? We are the branches. So if the branches don't bear fruit, what happens? They get cut off. So if they get cut off, if I go like this, and cut those all those branches off and they fall on the ground, what's going to happen to them? No, they're going to die. You know why? Because they're what? They're not connected to the branch, the vine, the cordon. Right? Cordon? That's how you say that? Cordon? Cordon. That's what it means. The vine. That's exactly, I guess that's in Spanish, Greekish. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. So verse 3 says, Woo, Hallelujah. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Thank God for his word. So we know the word, right? We know about Jesus, right? Amen. Yes. Everybody knows about Jesus? Yes. yes. Praise Hallelujah. God. Then verse 4 says, Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. So if we look at the tree again. And we look at those branches that I cut off a little while ago. You think if they're cut off, you think it's going to bear any fruit? No. 
As Christians, when we give our lives to Christ and receive the eternal gift of eternal life, which is centered around our relationship with Christ, He gives us the Holy Spirit to help us sustain our relationship with Him. Amen? But it says here, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So if you're not connected to the vine, you are not going to bear fruit. The life needs to be in the vine. We need to be feeding from the vine because if we're cut off from the vine, we do not have any source of life. And then what happens? We fall on the ground, and what happens? We wither. We wither. It doesn't work. It says, I am the vine and the branches. No, 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 let's go back. As the branches cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. If you're not connected, you are not connected you will eventually die. Branches cannot stay alive if they're not connected to the vine. Jesus, help us. We are the branches. He is the vine. We are the branches. He is the vine. If the branches are not connected to the vine, we cannot stay alive. Not only that, we will not bear any fruit. Verse 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bear much fruit. For without me, you can do what? Nothing. nothing. Some things, maybe I can do some things. Nothing. nothing. Because some people think that they can do some things. <laughs> nothing. But let me tell you something about myself. I can do Nothing. I will not be able to do nothing. I cannot stand up here today and speak to you if I was not connected to the vine. Amen. Because I would not have no source of him. Are you guys understanding me? Yes. yes. Amen. He says... If anyone does not abide in me, he is casted out as a branch and is withered. Oh my gosh. So you, that's it. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. So what happens to those that are not connected to the vine? And, and maybe it's not really talking about like going to hell or whatever. You could put it up however you want. But I think this illustration is pretty clear. For those that think that way, once connected to the vine, always connected to the vine. Boy, you didn't see that one coming, huh, Gene? <laughs> it's pretty clear, this illustration. If you're not connected to the vine, you ain't going to be part of the vine. So those that think once saved, always saved, I think this illustration is pretty clear for you. So you need to open your eyes. Because Jesus is not saying once connected to the vine, you're always connected to the vine. He says if you're not connected to the vine, what's going to happen? Oh, if, you, if anyone does not abide in me, he is casted out as a branch and is what? Withered. So if you're not connected to Jesus, eventually you're going to die. He is our source of life. Amen. 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 I don't need to preach anymore. It, it's clear. It's clear what it says here. I cannot believe people don't see this. I'm talking about scholars. Like, dude, Jesus said, if you're not connected to me, you will die. I am your source of life. It doesn't say once in the vine, always in the vine. Where did people get that? I'm 
I'm sorry if I'm offending anyone that wants to get the easy way out, but it's not easy. God never told me that it was going to be easy. I don't know if he told you that, but if the one that I speak to, he says, you're going to have to fight for what? Because if not, you're going to die. You need to be what? Connected to the vine. Because if you're connected to the vine, you're going to be feeding off of what? Off of me. Off the head. Off the branch. Come on, let me see that picture one more time. Hallelujah. Boy, when I'm connected to that vine, <laughs> let me tell you, bro, I'm feeding. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep, keep getting fat because I'm, gonna, I'm not going to wither because well, I, I'm getting the source. I'm getting the source that I need. And then in the other side, it looks like some fruit over there. Right? Yes. Some good fruit. Amen. Some clusters. Yes. You think you're going to have clusters if you're not connected to the vine? No. Mm -hmm. You think a vine on the floor is going to um, produce clusters? No. No. It's going to what? Wither and die. That's what he says, right? Yes. Are you guys getting something here? Yes. I'm finished already. <laughs> I'm not finished. Almost. Almost. That's, this is the last verse. Right, Gene? Yes, yeah, the last verse. Hallelujah. It's plain and simple. Jesus gave his disciples a solemn but loving warning of the fact that it is possible for true believers can't ultimately abandon their faith and turn their backs on Jesus and fail to remain in a relationship with him. As a result, they are cut off and will be thrown into the fire. <laughs> you want to go forward? Stay right there. Just look at the vine. This also shows us that our relationship with Jesus can never stay stagnant. Amen. It cannot stay the same. You know why? Because either it grows or it dies. If a tree doesn't grow anymore, what happens to it? It dies. Our relationship can't stay like, oh, this is the way I'm going to live for Jesus. And let me tell you, if you think that you're cool the way that you're living and that's it, you eventually will die. Mm -hmm. One more, Jesus. One more. You need to keep growing. The Bible says that I'm going from glory to glory. Amen. It, doesn't, it doesn't say anywhere you could go just stay stagnant. It's fine. You could just hang out. I don't, I've never seen that scripture. I'm going to study when I get home because I've never seen a scripture that says you can stay stagnant. No. But it does say from glory to glory. It does say fight the good fight of faith. Doesn't it say that? I don't know. Yes. Yes. Because Jesus is only showing me some good stuff here. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something. We cannot rely on past experiences no. to keep us connected to Christ. Oh, no. amen. Any new experiences? Boy. Any new experience? I cannot keep thinking all the time, well, he saved me and, and that's it. No. No. I need a new experience. I'm going for something new yes. this year. Oh, my Lord. Yes. God has something greater in my yes. life. I'm not the same. Yes. I'm sorry. This one here is not. I'm not. I'm renewing. I'm keep. I'm gonna keep going. New heart. If I stay the same, I'm gonna die. I'm not gonna keep going. I need to change my mind. I need. I need to change my thinking. I need to get out of that grasshopper mentality. There's no giants that can stop me. Because my name is Eddie Ramirez. And I'm more than a conqueror Amen. in Christ Jesus. Amen. Because he says so. Amen. Amen. 
And I'm a powerful man of God. I don't care what anyone says. Amen. And I believe in his word. Amen. And I'm walking in his word. Amen. And I'm going to move in his word. Amen. Don't matter what anyone says. Because the Bible says, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. That's right. Even when the enemy has his hand and tries to squash me, I come out like a giant. Because I'm defeating that giant. Amen. I'm taking the head of my Goliath. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But you can stay in the same old thing. No. Oh, he's a giant. I can't take him. No. Oh, no, no. Buddy. I'm a regulator. <laughs> Come on now. If I did it in the world, I'll do it for the Lord. That's right. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. If I was that in the world, and I was like whatever everyone else says, you know, that I was, like, hello? Wait, now I got a greater strength inside of me. Amen. I have Jesus. You know what they told me the other day, Gene? That we, that I hit somebody over the head with my wheelchair that was going to... You you imagine that? <laughs> I, like, I, I, I don't remember that stuff. Omar, he says he has a bunch of stories. I'm going to have to sit down with him one day. Because I don't remember a bunch of stuff. But let me tell you, if I did some crazy stuff like that, I could do some crazier stuff for Jesus. Amen. Because the one that's living in me now... <laughs> Let me tell you, it's greater than anything. But if I'm not connected to that right there, if I'm not connected to that vine, I don't have no source of life. If I'm not connected in that vine and I'm not praying and I'm not seeking God and I'm not getting filled and I'm not just sucking up what he has for me, you know what's going to happen? The Bible says it. He says you will wither and die. And when you start withering, you get thrown in the fire. Because all your good is for firewood. But let me tell you, we tried to burn some wood the other day over there in the Keys. It didn't want to light. Why? Because it was soaked. When you're soaked with the Holy Ghost, you cannot wither. You will not die. And you cannot get burned. Don't matter. I put a torch on that thing. And it still didn't want to light. I put map gas on it. It still didn't want to light. Yeah. It didn't want to light. Did it light? No. Because it was soaked. Imagine you're soaked with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Who's going who's gonna to come and, and take you down? Nobody. Huh? Nobody. Even if you cut down, even if you destruct, Everything could happen to you, let me tell you, but if, you could, if you're sucking up that water and you're being filled with the Holy Ghost, nothing could light you up. Amen. Amen. Let me see what's in heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Okay, I got one more thing. An authentic relationship with Jesus must be continually in progress and developing as God's spirit lives in us. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, I receive that. Continually. Yeah. All the time. We cannot just be like, oh, today I'm going to take a break. No. I used to do that. I'm serious. I used to do that. Well, I already did what I had to do today. I preach on Sunday. I'm going to take a break now. What are you going to take a break to do? That's the you can take a break, but what are you going to do in that break? I'm going to leave it right there. Let your mind take it with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. If we are not connected, what's going to happen? We're going to die. Hallelujah. I'm going to finish already with this is the last verse. Seven, right? Ooh. Seven and eight. Let's do this group. Bam. 
If you abide in me and my word, it seems it seems like he keeps saying the same thing over and over again, right? Because he's he's telling you you need to stay connected. He keeps saying, "Hey, get connected." You like that once in the vine, always in the vine, right? You like that girl, right? <laughs> it's not true. But he keep. Why does he keep saying, "If you abide in me and my word abides in you"? Now he's talking about some good stuff. You will ask. You ask what you desire and it shall be done. Hallelujah. Oh, he, he came to a good part now. Amen. Hallelujah. Who can say hallelujah to that? You like that part, Omar? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever I want, he's going to give it to me. That's God's heart. That's God's heart. It says, by this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit so that... What? Oh, oh my Jesus. You see, as you get connected to you him, you start growing. You start feeding on the vine. You start bearing fruit. It says what it says you start bearing fruit, whatever you desire, it shall be done. Now I'm going to show you what the Lord showed me this morning. And I'm, I promise I'm going to finish with this. <laughs> this is what God showed me this morning when I was sitting in my chair. He says, when you, he told me, when you're so connected with me, the vine that is Christ, you're not going to ask me for any earthly things. Did you understand yeah, that? Amen. Go back to the other verse. Your kingdom come, your will be done. If you abide in me and my word in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done. You see, and God told me, when you're connected to me, <laughs> you're not going to desire any worldly things. You're not going to want anything that's from the world. That's all you're going to want to do? Is for this fruit to be a disciple. Amen. You're not going to want. Like right now, we could say, Lord, I want a, I want a house. I want a car. And I need, I need this. I need to fix my boat. I need to pay my bills. I need to do this. I need to do that. Just put whatever you want in there. This is what I want. This is what I want. Who wants stuff? Tell me, for real, who wants, nobody wants anything here? Who, you want something, right? What do you want, a house? You want a house, right? Do you, what do you want? What do you want? Tell me. Who? A face. You have a face. I said things. Things, you want things. I want a wife. I want a relationship. I want this, I want that, right? But let me tell you. When you're connected to the vine, you don't want nothing but the vine. Your mind is set on the vine, and that's it. Everything, all your wants, all your desires, all your needs don't matter. Because all you want to do is keep feeding on the vine. That's what God showed me. He's like... You don't desire even to work. I'm like, I'm a lazy bum. No, you're not a lazy bum because all you desire is to be feeding off the vine. <laughs> <laughs> My wife, yeah, he's lazy now. No, I'm not lazy. No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just I'm kidding. Saying that. I'm not saying that. I never heard her say that. But think about it. Think about this for a second. When you are feeding off the vine, what, what do you think those vine want? Good, good. Let me show you that picture. Let me. See. What do you think these vines want right here? They want more. The, one, the branches want more of the vine. To what? To, to grow fruit. To, to grow, grow fruit. fruit. They're, not thinking of it. They're not thinking about. Oh, I need to put some shade over me. Because look, look what it says here. Well, I just seen that right now from over there. A canopy. You see the canopy. 
is going to get there when you start flourishing. But you have to be wanting more of Jesus. And I, I'm telling you, God showed me that it was so incredible because I was like, Lord, you know, it says in, in verse, in verse, um, it says, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, wh wh what would you think when you read something like that? Lord, give me everything. I, what does it say? What you want? Desire. What does that mean, desire? I desire a car. I desire a boat. I desire a whole bunch of things. Right? I was thinking about this this morning when I was reading. I was like, Lord, I desire all kind of stuff. But right now, when I was sitting in that chair, and this whole week, and last week, and the week before, and for this whole year, the only thing that I desire is getting closer to Jesus, feeding off the vine. Because when I feed off the vine, let me tell you, I will produce fruit. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you, a little storm could come, and it could just take a little bit of fruit. But let me tell you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back and keep feeding out the vine. Because when I keep feeding out the vine, what's going to happen? I'm going to pr produce fruit. And all those ugly little things on the side, I'm going to say, Lord, God, the Father, come and clean some stuff up. I need, I need you to clean this stuff up because I, I need I, something rubbed off on me that don't need to be on me. Because I had a dream because I seen something that was not edifying in my life. But now I say, Lord, because I'm connected to here, you're going to come and clean something for me now. But if you're not connected to the root, to a cordon, let me tell you, you're going to die. Yes. That's why we need to feed on this. Amen, the word. We need to feed on this word. Oh my Lord, the word, Rachel. This is the vine. The true vine. The only vine. Amen. The only thing that we need is this. Hallelujah, I just thought about something. You see, in the funeral that I was in the other day, that I conducted the other day, I... I made an altar call, and this is what I, I needed to do, because people need to know Christ and accept their lives and give their life to Christ. Amen? Amen. Right? This, this is just came to my head. This is the word. Amen? So they, they came and accepted Christ. They connected to the vine. Amen? Amen? They're there. What happens if they don't keep feeding off the vine? You see, I, I wish I would have had this revelation a couple days ago because I would have threw it at them. I would have said, look, you need to stay connected to the vine if you want to get to heaven. Because the Bible tells me, what, is, what does the other verse say? Oh. No. There. If anyone does not abide in me, he is casted out as a branch and it is withered. And it will be gathered, they will be gathered them and thrown into the fire, and they are burned. No. We need to be connected to the vine. Who wants to be connected to the vine? Hallelujah. Lord, just give me whatever you want, basically. Because I don't want anything else. I don't need nothing. I don't need a wife. I don't need a car. You provide. The thing is, listen to this. Listen to this. I, I'm, I'm just getting another revelation right now. This is what happens. Hallelujah. When we're connected to the vine, and we're feeding off the vine, he says, ask, go, go back to that verse. It says, if you abide in my word, and my word abides in you, what does it say? Ask, Ask desire, and what? It yeah. shall be done. Amen? Mm -hmm. So, if we're connected to the vine, we're not worried about asking for nothing. Right? 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 right. Because all we need is Him. It says, first seek the kingdom. Amen? That's, but listen to this. Listen to this revelation that I just got right now. Listen to this. Get this and practice it. When you're stuck on the vine, 
You don't care about your own desires. You just want to do his desires. That's right. You know why? Because since you're not worried about your own desires, you know that he's going to take care of the desires. Amen. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Because you're so connected to him and you're so trusting in him that you know he's going to take care of everything that you need. So I don't really care about nothing. Because he's going to take care of it. All I, all I care about is him. That's it. That's it. I don't care about nothing. I don't care about my bills. I don't care about anything. Because when I'm connected to that line, he's taking care of everything. Without even me even desiring anything. Yes, because he used everything. Isn't that awesome? Oh, my God, yes. God is going to take care of everything for you. It's like for my wife, coconut water tastes good. Oh my gosh. Right? <laughs> she just wants to keep drinking more and more and more. Yes. That's the same thing I want more and more, Jesus. <coughs> That's it. Just more. just more of Him. That's all we need, more That's of Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I'm finished. Amen. Water. Nothing matters. Yeah. The only thing that matters is Him. If we are connected to the vine, we are going to prosper. Get connected to the vine. This is not a book. The vine. This is the vine. When you feed off of this, you're going to grow. And let me tell you, you are going to bear much fruit. Yeah. Like it shows in that little picture there. That's all you're going to want. Amen? And you see, there's going to be a canopy over you. And that is God's protection. <laughs> God's going to have his protection over you. Because you're not even going to care. You're not even going to desire anything. Because he's taking care of all your bills, all your needs. He's always taking care of my bills. And, and I've always had in the past, like, worries for no reason. Because if I was connected to the vine, I wouldn't have to worry about anything. Because he was going to take care of all my needs. In his what? Riches and what? Glory. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I love Jesus. Thank you. Who's the vine? Jesus. Who's the true vine? Jesus. Where do we have to abide? In God. That's it. And what else matters? Nothing. Only him. Nothing. Only him. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Oh my Lord. I just love him. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, you are the vine. You are the true vine. If we abide in you, nothing else matters, Lord. Hallelujah. Let us fall more in love with you, Father God, out. than ever, ever before, Father yes, God. Lord. Let us eat from the vine, Father God. Let us produce the fruit that you want us to produce, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I bless your people here today, Father God. I ask you, Father God, that we, Father God, will just abide in you and you only, Father God, and that everything else that really doesn't matter. You will put it into place, Father God. I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for this word, Father God, that was given here today, Father God. Let us receive and put it into practice, Father God. And those that are watching, Jesus is divine. That's the only way. Amen. So God bless you and have an awesome day and let the Lord be with you. Amen. Amen. Amen.